Welcome to the Ideal Investor Show. This is the podcast where we help you challenge your mindset and discover where you are. Tired of stories about other people's success? We can help you change your life, determine your time freedom point and join us on the journey to financial success. Let's go. Hey guys, it's me again and we are continuing our series talking about what does it take to actually get started with a path towards early retirement. And in the first episode, uh, I spoke about what does actually early retirement really mean in the context of um, what are your current expenses and how much money is coming in and do you actually have money to invest? And let's make the assumption the answer was yes. Then the next question we needed to answer is, when do you actually want to reach this early retirement? I used the example, if you're 32 and you want to retire at 45, then it's 13 years. When you now know that it's 13 years that you actually have to get the necessary money together, there is, and you may have actually heard about this, mainly focused on index fund investing, something called the FIRE movement. And this FIRE movement is actually identifying how do you actually figure out the amount of money that you need to have in asset value, meaning like, for example, stocks in your index fund, how much are they supposed to be worth so that you can have a certain amount of money every month? And the formula, and I want to address this because you find it so much if you Google it or Yahoo it or whatever other tool, Safari it or whatever you want to call it, whatever you use to do some research on this stuff, you will find that the people in the FIRE movement who became pretty famous are basically saying, take the amount that you would actually accumulate over these next 13 years. And it doesn't really matter if you're doing it in stocks or in real estate or crypto or whatever it is. Just take the value that you're going to reach at the point when you say you want to retire early, in our little example, in 13 years from now. And what is that value? And so if you say, okay, that value is $1 million. It's just because we want to have an easy calculation. Right. So if we were to say, OK, if we take out 10 percent of that million dollars, we would consume one hundred thousand dollars worth every year. What does the fire movement suggest? And they say their calculations show that if you look at how much your investments probably increase in value per year and how much you take out, what they have found is if you do the index fund investing, the long term average is 4% gain. Now, as we all know, stock investments fluctuate. Some years are really good, way, way better than 4%, and some years are bad, but the bad years are far and few between, and the good ones are more common. And then it also depends on what you're investing in, right? If you are like a growth stock, high-tech investor, you can have bigger gains. If you're more conservative, you have smaller gains, but more steady over time. So that's just something to consider. And this is also true in our specialty with residential real estate. The very long term average is somewhere between four and seven percent, depending on exactly how you're calculating it. But if you look at like the last four or five years, it was more in the area of 10 percent per year. That's just because prices and thereby value of the houses have increased very rapidly when the interest rates were very low between like 2018 and 20, like 22 or so in those four years. So people who bought something in 2018 or 19 and still have it today probably have made 10% gains. But will we continue to do that? Probably not. Right. So the long-term average that the fire movement people are using is 4%. And if you assume or if you accept that your assets grow at 4% per year and you take out 4% per year, then basically the amount of money that you still have left is almost the same as before you took it out. And this is obviously with very long-term perspective, like 20, 30-year time horizon. But there's one problem with it. If the value increases at 4% and you're taking out 4%, that assumes that you have continuously the same purchasing power. And that's what you don't have. And that's what I want you to be aware of and why I'm always showing that real residential real estate investing is superior to stock index fund investing. Because the stock index fund, even if you accept that it grows by 4 or 5%, the true fire movement, if you really read the formula, is saying 4% plus inflation. 
If you look at the last few years, we had years of inflation where it was 3%, 5%, 8%, 9%, 9%, almost 10% in 2021, right? So that's the issue. If you were to follow what you needed to retain the purchasing power, you would have had to take out that something 4% plus 9%, so 13% of your asset. And that is very hard to make up within the next following year. So if there is high inflation, you really, really have a problem to maintain your asset value, which is not an issue with real estate. So that's why I'm saying it's so important to look at how much do you really need to spend. And if the number is pretty substantial, then keep in mind that you need to also cover for inflation if you do it with stocks. If you do it with real estate, the real estate is automatically protected against inflation, right? Because if you think about it, you buy something, you have a 30-year financing on it, that won't change whatever the percentage interest rate was at the time. Now, you can change it if it's in your favor, but you would never change it if it's not in your favor. So you know exactly what the expense is, but if there is inflation... That means you will increase the income by increasing the rent, which is totally normal because everything gets more expensive when there is inflation. If it's an index fund or individual stocks, you cannot change the value of the stock, but you can change the income of your real estate by increasing the rent. That's basically the advantage of real estate over stocks. But the most important thing is to really become aware if you do any research on the fire movement in the context of you know, how much money do I actually need to accumulate through my for my investments so I can say, okay, let's say you wanted to take out $40,000 per year because you are a super frugal person and you think you can live off $40,000 per year as in today's money. You go with the 4% that the FIRE movement says you would need to have a million dollars. If you need $80,000 at 4%, you need $2 million in investments. So that's the number that you need to plug in for your 13 years, you would have 13 years to get to an asset value of 1 million, 2 million, 3 million. That's up to you because you're the only one who knows how much cash flow does your investing money need to make on a yearly basis so you can take some of it out and not exhaust it until you die. So that's really the important thing to understand in this third important part when you consider what do I need to do and how do I even get started and what are the numbers I need to consider for early retirement. So I hope this was helpful. I wish you all the best. Be well and stay safe. And I'll talk to you again tomorrow.